Hey everyone, Jeremy here with AE Screens, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you my latest script called Parallax. What this script allows you to do is move After Effects layers in 3D space along the Z axis while keeping their optical size and position. So to kind of show what that means, I'm gonna change this to a two view setup. And over here on this side, we've got the active camera, and then over here, we've got the top view. So in this composition, I just have each of these letters separated into their own layer, and then I've got a camera and a null object, and this camera is just parented to this null object. Now, normally, if you were to select a layer and then shift it back, it's gonna make it appear smaller, and then it's gonna shift it just kind of based on the angle of the camera and the camera configurations. But what we can do with Parallax is shift this back while having the size and the X and Y position automatically update as well. So I'm just gonna undo that, and then up here in my Parallax script, I have this set to 500, and we're going with pixels, and I've got this layer selected, so I can just hit push. And now that moved it back 500 pixels from where it was, and if I can just, I'll just pull up the position and scale. So we can see that indeed this is 500 pixels, and the scale was 100%, but now it's changed to uh, this crazy number. And that makes it appear as if it's nothing's happened. But then once we go and adjust the camera or animate the camera, we can see that indeed that P is uh, further back in the distance and a larger scale. So let me show a few other things you can do with this script. I'm gonna undo, so this is set to zero. Now I can select all of these layers and push them back simultaneously. And now they're all 500 pixels back. Um, I'm gonna undo that again. Uh, instead of doing it based on pixels, we could do it based on percentage. And so that works a little differently where uh, pixels um, is just kind of adding to whatever the current position is, right? So all of these are, I'm just gonna pull up that position uh, value. You can see this is zero. So if I go back to have this 500 pixels, I can push this. It's gonna change the Z position to 500. If I do this again, it's gonna change it to 1,000 and so forth. I'm gonna undo again. Now, if I were to change this to percentage, instead, this is gonna be looking at the scale and it's just gonna be multiplying the scale uh, by whatever percentage this is. So if it's set to 100%, it's not gonna do anything because 100% of 100% is indeed 100%. So I'm gonna change this to 200%, and now we can see that all of these are changing to 200%, uh, but again, it all is looking the same here. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that once again. Now, instead of uh, pushing these all simultaneously, I could uh, stagger this. So I'm gonna change this to 100 pixels, and then I'm gonna hit this stagger button. And then over here, you can see what it's doing. This first layer is uh, offset by 100 pixels, and then this next one is 200, and there's just a 100 uh, pixel increment in between each of them. But again, everything looks the same here. Now you can also do this with percentage. So if I just undo that, I could change this to maybe uh, 120 percent and then hit the stagger button and now because this is getting multiplied this one is 120 percent now this one is 120 percent of 120 percent so if you choose scale and you're staggering it's going to do it much more exponentially so you can see the space between these is getting much bigger now instead of controlling everything up here you could also just add controls here and so i'm, I'm going to set this to let's say 150 and i'm going to select all these layers and then i'm going to add controls and now each of these has this effect called parallax Z position. And so here I can adjust this kind of in real time and really fine tune it. Um, and you can see again, it's just remaining locked uh, with its optical size and position. Now the way this is working is if I untoggle the shy layers, you can see it created all these new layers and then each of these have some expressions applied to them. So the only downside to using controls like this is it can kind of uh, add a lot to your project and my render time just went up a little bit. So once you're done kind of fine tuning where you want a layer to be positioned, you can select those layers and then hit this bake button. And that's going to just eliminate the controls and eliminate all those layers, but that position and scale will be retained. Now, if you wanna just reset everything, you can do that by pressing this button. And so what that's gonna do is bring the position to zero and the scale to 100% and shift it and do whatever it needs to do just to get it back to normal. So I'm just gonna hit this button and now we can see all those are indeed back to normal. All right, so let me jump to a more practical application. So in this composition, I've got this pretty cool illustration 
and I've got it separated into different layers. So here I've got this first mountain, then I have the statue, the statue is on this mountain, and then there's those mountains in the distance, there's some clouds, and then we've got the moon and the sky. Now I've got the 3D toggle switched on for all these, and I just added a simple little camera animation. So I kind of just want to push the camera into this statue. Now if I go ahead and play this back, we can see that it does that, but it's pretty boring because I haven't done anything to my layers. So it's all flat and it doesn't look like it's actually within the scene. It just kind of looks like it's zooming in on a picture. So in order to make this a lot better, we can just offset these layers in Z space with parallax. So I'm actually not gonna bother with this guy. I'm gonna just go ahead and turn this 3D off as a matter of fact, because we'll just want that background to remain the same the whole time. And then I'm not gonna touch the mountain. I'm fine with that Z position being at zero. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna target the statue all the way to the moon. And then I have this set to 250 pixels and then I'm gonna hit the stagger button. And now if I go ahead and play this back, already this is looking way better. Um, there's just that parallax effect and you can see that that mountain is kind of sliding out of the way as we're getting closer to the statue and that's already looking pretty cool. Now this moon is moving too much. So I'm gonna just select this moon layer and over here now my camera isn't in the default position. So whatever we do to update the position and scale with parallax, it's gonna show up here and that's fine. Um, so here, I'm just gonna set this to 4,000 pixels and I'm just gonna push that moon back and we can see, okay, that moon is now further back and we can see there's still a little bit of movement in it, but it's just much more subtle and probably more realistic for the way this scene is set up. Now again, those clouds are a little too close as well, so I'm gonna push those back. I'm gonna go maybe 2,500 pixels, and I'm gonna push those back. And again, I'll play this back, and now I really like how those clouds are, they're moving, but again, it's much more subtle. And once again, I'll select these mountains. This is the third mountain range back there. Um, I'll just maybe push these back, maybe 500 pixels, and I like that. So just real quick, just with just a few button clicks, I was able to make this scene much more dynamic and uh, make it feel like it's a real 3D scene within my composition. So that's some of the stuff you can do with Parallax. I hope you find it super useful. If you have any questions, please let me know. And until next time, take care.